The lure of downhill racing is pretty seductive. Courses promising fast times and scenic views are becoming more and more popular, especially for runners looking for the extra edge to finish in a personal record or to score a Boston qualifying time. But downhill running is actually much harder on your body than flat or even uphill running. And surprisingly, some runners end up being slower on courses with a lot of decline. I'm going to talk all about downhill running and racing. You'll learn how downhill running uniquely affects your body, how to run downhill properly to minimize the negative effects, and how to train better for a course with lots of decline. When it comes to hills, the inclines seem to get all the attention. Running uphill is far more taxing on our glutes and our cardiovascular system as we fight gravity to go forward. But downhill running is actually harder on the legs than running on flat or even climbing. That's why learning proper downhill form and technique is essential for both efficiency and performance, as well as injury prevention. So why is downhill running so hard on your body? Running downhill can feel much easier because your breathing is not challenged nearly as much. When you use gravity to your advantage, you can essentially free fall forward without having to create the extra power to do it. But that free speed comes at a cost. Downhill running is far more taxing on your muscles and joints. This is because the action of downhill running is what's called an eccentric contraction. When you run uphill, your muscles constrict in a concentric movement. Why is this important? Well, let's go into a little exercise science. In a concentric contraction, the muscle tension rises to meet the resistance and then remains stable as the muscle shortens. During eccentric contraction, the muscle lengthens as the resistance becomes greater than the force the muscle is producing. During the eccentric phase of an exercise, you work with the force of gravity. A good example is lowering your arms back towards your side in a biceps curl. And these are also called negative movements and have been shown to help build muscle mass and increase strength. The way we build muscle is through muscle damage and repair, and the majority of that damage happens during eccentric training. While this is a good thing, the downside is that lots of eccentric work comes with increased delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS, in comparison to concentric movements. This is also often where injuries happen as well. To get the muscle building benefits of downhill running with as little soreness and injury as possible, you'll need to be smart about including downhill running in your training plan gradually. Not only that, you'll want to use great downhill form to use gravity as an advantage and not as a recipe for injury. The first part of good downhill form is to lean forward. This is counterintuitive because your brain naturally wants to lean back to prevent you from tumbling off the mountain. The problem with leaning back is that it forces your feet out ahead of your body, which creates more impact force on your knees and it slows you down. Remember, your brain doesn't care about running fast. It's overprotective and wants to slow you down on a hill. To override that, you'll need to lean forward the same way you would naturally lean forward on an uphill, with your shoulders in line with your knees and your nose being the first part of your body to cross a line. Your arms are also important in downhill running. On a smooth road, you might not need to change too much about your arm swing, but you definitely will on a technical trail descent. Let them help keep your balance by moving them as you need to to stay upright, even if that means they flail out to your sides at times. This means you will carry them a little looser and swing them in a more circular motion to help keep you moving forward. How you land is the next key factor to running downhill well. You'll want to be sure that you're landing as quietly as you can, as this helps absorb the damaging impact. With your good forward lean, it's much more difficult to heel strike, which will act as a braking force. And by braking, I mean both slowing you down and breaking your body, so aim to land in the middle of your foot instead. On a smooth course, a longer stride can help you go faster, provided that it's not so long that you're landing on your heels. But on a tough trail or a very steep hill, a shorter, quicker stride is the way to go. And finally, the next critical component to good downhill running form is to relax and enjoy it. Running downhill can be exhilarating fun. It's natural to be a little nervous and afraid of falling, but the chance of falling when you are relaxed is much lower than when you're completely gripped and tense. Now that you know how to run downhill well, 
How much downhill running should you be doing? If your goal is simply to build muscle strength in your legs, adding in downhills once or twice a month is a great way to do it. You can do a specific downhill repeat workout, or you can swap out some of your uphill repeats for downhill repeats in your next hill workout instead of just using the downhill as recovery. Start with just a couple repetitions at first, and next month you can add in a few more as you get stronger. If your goal race has lots of downhill, you'll want to be very strategic about your downhill training. As always, the exact prescription will vary depending on your experience and your unique fitness level, so this is definitely not a one-size-fits-all approach. In general, you should include a downhill training hill workout about once every 10 to 14 days. Now, if you live in a very hilly area, this doesn't mean you should avoid hills for your daily runs if that's what you're used to. A specific hill workout is one that's all about form and technique not distance or pace. They place a lot of load and stress on your legs and overdoing it can lead to injury. So again, start gradually with a workout that is shorter than your normal workouts. If you're preparing for a long downhill race, your hill workouts will need to have progressively longer sections of decline. According to the organizers of the Revel races like Big Cottonwood, the types of hill workouts that will benefit you the most are downhill repeats of distances ranging from the quarter mile up to a mile in length, although more advanced runners can practice sustained downhill intensity for longer distances. Whatever your experience level, your training should include enough downhill distance to allow you to practice your form, but without putting enormous strain on your legs. The next concept you'll want to consider is that you'll need to be prepared to run faster than you normally would run on flat. Since the cardiovascular component is much easier on downhill, this will happen naturally when you're using good form, but to really maximize your training, you'll need to teach your brain and your feet to pick up the pace. Depending on the elevation loss in your race, this could be anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds faster per mile than you would normally run. Yes, you will work on this when you run downhill specific workouts, but practicing this pace on flat on other speed days is incredibly important as well. So that means hit the track or a flat stretch of road and work on paces that are faster than your normal marathon pace. This could be your half marathon pace or close to it, but don't forget that successful marathon training consists of lots of different kinds of workouts and lots of easy running. What if you don't have access to hills? Can you still successfully train for a downhill race? Yes, but certainly it's a little trickier. The best way is to use a treadmill with a decline function. This will allow you to mimic downhills inside. If that's not an option for you, your town might have bridges or parking lots that you can train in. The trick is to get creative and do the best you can with what you've got. You'll also want to focus on eccentric training in the gym. All runners should be doing this anyway, but downhill racers will want to pay more attention to the negative phase of their lifts. Again, a little goes a long way and a lot leads to injury, so work hard but smart and recover well. With smart training and great downhill form, you can conquer the descent like a pro and earn your fastest time yet.